Hello and welcome to Tea Time. I'm Ginger Nelson here with my co-host Nettie Hatcher and today we are delighted to have Patrick Reynolds on the set with us and he is the Executive Director of the Foundation for a Smoke-Free America. Welcome! Well thank you for having me on. Now Patrick can you tell us a little bit about your background, your family? Oh well now that's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> my, my grandfather founded the company. Uh, he was R.J. Reynolds the giant tobacco company that makes Camel cigarettes and Winston's and Salem's and uh, for a while Oreo cookies <laughs> and I chose to go against my heritage after my father died from smoking. He was R.J. Reynolds Jr. He was the son of the founder um, and I they say you find your calling in your deepest wound, the place you've been hurt sometimes we find what we're supposed to do with our lives. It's the ex-alcoholic who becomes a, a drug addict, uh, a, rather the ex, a good speaker on alcohol, the ex-drug addict who becomes a good speaker on drugs, um, the person who comes from a dysfunctional family where there was abuse becomes a wonderful child abuse counselor. So I lost my dad to smoking. Uh, as a Reynolds, I've got a wonderful platform to call public attention and shine the spotlight on uh, state tobacco tax hikes and uh, smoking bans when they were just first starting out. And a lot of people said, well, it, they've always smoked at restaurants, what's wrong with that? And you know, I've worked on a lot of smoking bans and had the vision to see that a smoke-free restaurant was a good thing when a lot of people didn't want to change. Um, I've worked on uh, vending machine bans and a lot of things over the years where I've been able to hold a press conference and call public attention to uh, the anti-tobacco point of view. And I've had an interesting experience. I've, my, my family uh, popularized smoking in America, but by going against it, maybe I've made a small difference. Uh, and I'm not a hero, I'm not, you know, you know I'm just doing my job. And uh, I told the children this morning at the middle school uh, here in Tifton that there are very few real heroes in this world. You know, uh, I support my foundation through speaking fees. I'm doing a job. I like the work. And there are heroes, but they're few and far between. And I said, remember, rather than giving all the credit away to uh, some remote uh, hero that you idolize, that you too are a hero and keep some of that credit for yourself. The same mistake is made when people blame others when things go wrong. I said you might want to keep a little bit of that responsibility and figure out what your part in things was. Uh, you probably want to hear about stories about the Reynolds family? Yeah, the stories about the Reynolds family. I mean, how did your family feel when you decided to speak out <laughs> against basically the industry that they have built? That's a good question. Um, they were pretty upset with me. Some of my brothers were up in arms. And, You'll be an embarrassment to the family and you're going <laughs> to just, you know, uh, but they've seen in the, and the, you're going to hurt the price of the stock. And I said, well, you know what? I sold all my stock in R.J. Reynolds in 1979. I didn't want to earn my living from or earn money from a company I knew was poisoning people with its products mm -hmm. and targeting children and the young mm -hmm. and lying about the dangers of their products. And But my brother said, well, you'll hurt the price of the stock. The stock kept going up and I brought honor to the Reynolds family. Someone in the family's on the right side for a change. And I think they, they quieted down. They were a lot more upset with me about the book I wrote about the family, the biographical book, which I co-authored with a wonderful biographer. And um, it's called The Gilded Leaf, and it tells the story of three generations of the family, from R.J. Reynolds building up the company, battling against Buck Duke and the Tobacco Trust, to my father being a Playboy heir in the 1920s, getting a pilot's license at Kitty Hawk, signed by Orville Wright, Mm. Um, Interesting. Owning one of the barrier islands off the coast of Georgia, Sapelo Island, uh, three miles off the coast, uh, where, which was his private domain and fiefdom. And he had the great house on Sapelo Island. And the University of Georgia runs conferences there a lot, and it's open as a conference center. 
But it's really where the ecology movement got kick-started in the United States, because my father funded a biologist called Eugene Odom, who um, published a paper, The Ecology of a Salt Marsh, which showed for the first time the fragile cycle of nature in the wetlands. And that paper research done on Sapelo helped, you know, kick off the ecology movement as we know it today. So proud of my dad for that. He funded Harry Truman, and before that, Roosevelt. He was a big Democrat, and he, they made him treasurer of the Democratic Party. And he believed in helping the poor and uh, facilitating, you know, anti-venereal programs and th the things that were good for the community. And my dad was a wonderful man, married four times, and uh, very colorful. My mother was an actress under contract to Warner Brothers in the 40s, beautiful redhead. Uh, this is my father's third wife, uh, but she, he was ignoring her and drinker, and, and, and his third wife may have tried to uh, murder him, and the fourth wife uh, was a German lady in Switzerland who inherited most of his money, so, which is fine, and, and um, there was enough to go around. But I, I really uh, think it's a kind of a colorful story that, you know, might be good television drama one day, we'll see. Very interesting uh, yeah. family background. Now, I have a question for you, kind of a personal question. Did you always know when you were growing up around tobacco and in the smoking industry, did you always know that smoking was not for you? Or did that come about once your father passed away? Didn't really know. I mean, I, I, uh, I really kind of numbed out. I didn't know my father that well. My parents got divorced when I was three. And my mother brought me up to believe my father was wonderful, to her credit. And uh, when I was nine, I wrote him a letter. But you know, I, like a lot of men out there, uh, you know, I had a strong father issue. Mm -hmm. You know, in my case, there was no father. He abandoned my my brother and I, and after he divorced my mother. So when I was nine, I wrote him a letter. And a lot of other men have conflicts with their dads, and it's a it's a almost universal among men that we have something about our father. So anyway, I wrote him a letter. I said, Dear Dad, I want to meet you. Where are you? And he was traveling, going from place to place. And my letter forwarded and got into his hands by some miracle from God. And he sent for me. And I was so excited. My brother and I were going to get to meet him for the first time. And they showed me into the room where he was. And I found him there lying down. He was on his back. I said, Dad, what's wrong? He said, I have asthma, son. It wasn't asthma, it was emphysema, mm -hmm. as it turned out. And I said, and he had a cigarette in his hand. I mm -hmm. said, anything to do with your smoking? He said, nah. Mm -hmm. you know. And he died when I was 15, so that, that really uh, had a lot to do with why I um, went against my family. Tifton Regional Medical Center has brought me here uh, to speak to the community and my talk at the community uh, went great, and I discussed the uh, Georgia's tobacco tax, its uh, use of the payments uh, by the lawsuits against by the states, all the revenue that tobacco generates. They're not spending much of it on educating children mm. in Georgia. It's rather disgraceful, but Georgia's not alone. They get an F for that. Uh, but many states do. Mm -hmm. Only two states are spending what the CDC recommends. Uh, Georgia's tobacco tax uh, is a definite pet peeve of mine. It's 37 cents versus a national average of $1.39. Wow. So Georgia is so behind the times. And this ideology that taxes are bad is just pig-headed stupidity. We need less ideology from our politicians. Uh, all this ideology that the government is not your friend, we don't need regulation, taxes are bad, don't. Come on, tobacco taxes are good. You have to look at each tax in a pragmatic way. So less ideology, more pragmatism. Taxes bring in revenue for the state, and taxes stop kids from smoking, and taxes will certainly uh, encourage smokers to quit. So 
come on, Georgia, let's get with the program and raise the tobacco tax. It's a lot better than raising the state income tax or sales tax. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking with Patrick Reynolds today from the Foundation for a Smoke-Free America. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. No matter how great they are, pictures will never give you the full back experience. You've got to see campus. Join us for a stallion day or personalize your visit with a weekday tour. Go to abac.edu slash stallion days to sign up now. We hope to see you soon in Tifton at Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College. Communication, data transmission, and methods of securing facilities and homes are ever evolving. Let Cooper Craft's team of experienced professionals partner with you to manage your technology needs. Coopercraft manages hundreds of accounts in the Southeast, including numerous hospitals and healthcare facilities, industrial plants, law enforcement centers, and educational facilities. These customers depend on Coopercraft. Why shouldn't you? Let a proven leader in the industry earn your business. Call us today. Ranchero's Fresh Grill is now open in Tifton at 133 South Virginia Avenue across from Tractor Supply. Ranchero's has the finest and freshest tacos, burritos, salads, quesadillas, nachos, and chips and salsa anywhere. Want dessert? Ranchero's has that as well with the s'mores quesadilla for only $2.99. Don't forget about the kids. Ranchero's has kids meals starting at only $3.99. Find them on Facebook for coupons and specials. Call them at 396-5555, 133 South Virginia Avenue in Tifton. For over 42 years, Moon's Pharmacy has been committed to providing professional, friendly service, where our pharmacists welcome your questions, offer you overall lower drug costs, and free citywide delivery. While we still believe in good old-fashioned customer service, we also know the importance of staying on the leading edge of pharmacy innovations, such as travel and flu vaccines, custom compounding, and specialty packaging for homebound patients. Choose Moon's Pharmacy. Together, we can make a difference in your health. Welcome back to Tea Time. We've been talking to Patrick Reynolds, and he is the Executive Director for the Foundation of a Smoke-Free America. Now, Patrick, before we went to break, you were telling us about a little bit about the taxes of the cigarettes. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Oh, you bet. I, 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 this is a, pa a passion of mine, so you've got a passionate guy here about this. <laughs> we live in a complex time with complex problems. Uh, we live in a time of new diseases like AIDS and SARS and bird flu and uh, trying to get the Republicans and the Democrats to balance the budget in Congress and work with the president. You know, it's a complex time with complex problems. And an ideology that offers simpl simplistic uh, solutions for complex problems is not going to work. Not all taxes are bad. Tobacco taxes, for example, keep kids from starting to smoke. They incentivize people who do smoke to quit. Well, when know, they that's quit, when it starts is when they're so? young. I mean, most smokers start when they're very young age. All, they almost all start when they're young, and kids are very price sensitive. So if we can raise the tax to be like it is in the rest of the country, about uh, a dollar higher than where it is here, um, you know, but the problem is the amount of money that the tobacco industry is giving to our politicians. Unfortunately, uh, very sadly, uh, around 80% of their money goes to Republican candidates. And wow. under President Bush, we tried to pass a uh, 69 cent tax hike on tobacco, federal tax, couldn't get it done. When it did finally pass Congress with a few Republican votes, Bush vetoed it. So one of the biggest donors to the Republicans has been big tobacco. Uh, the Democrats, they hardly give them any money, but there are some bad Democrats, too, in this area. <laughs> and there are some really good Republicans, like mm -hmm. John McCain. Point is, overall, as a party, uh, we couldn't get FDA regulation or a federal tobacco tax hike under Bush. Under Obama, by contrast, we had a federal tobacco tax hike within two weeks of his taking office. And we had FDA, FDA regulation passed by the Democratic Congress six months into Obama's first term. So yay Democrats when it comes to tobacco. Mm -hmm. Now, Democrats got the trial lawyers <laughs> and they have their own political, you know, bu and Hollywood bugaboos that they do favors for that mm -hmm. they probably shouldn't be doing. 
point is we've got to change the way campaigns are financed. We need public finance of campaigns and to stop these special interests. But unfortunately, until we had overturned the Supreme Court ruling that the big fat cats out there, the billionaires, can give as much money as they want to pass legislation that serves their interests, uh, things aren't going to change. And I'm, it was very sad to see that Supreme Court ruling. But all of that is one of the core problems with tobacco. And, um, you know, I'd like to have seen Obama do more with FDA regulation in the past year. We haven't done much. But he did give us a, a good start his first year in office. But I think he's turned his attention now to other priorities, sadly for us. Now, you spend much of your time these days traveling and talking about a smoke-free America. You go into a lot of school systems, also to speak with a lot of adults. What kind of response are you getting from the kids? Oh, let's talk about the kids. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, you could take all the adult stuff and, you know, yeah. it's, it's boring. But, I mean, I'm passionate about it, and I almost ran for Congress. But I r think I make more of a difference speaking to the children. Mm -hmm. So my message for the children at both of the middle schools while I was, you know, speaking at the schools thanks to Tifton Regional Medical Center was this. I opened with the story of my father dying from smoking. I engaged their hearts. I said, how many of you don't have your biological father living at home with you? Hands. Mm. How do you feel about that? Are you a little sad? Are you a little afraid? Are you a little angry? And I, I, I just reached into their hearts and yanked the feelings out of them because when you engage the audience emotionally with passion, with your fear, with your, your, your anger, with your, sa your sadness, then you're going to connect with the audience. And that's what I do with the children. Once I've got the emotional connection and the bond, because that, that fact of father not being in the house transcends a lot of you know, differences yes. between us. Mm -hmm. But that father uh, lack is a common bond. And once I've got connected emotionally with them, I then can, then can let them know, if I could give you one message today, smoking is addictive. Once you start smoking, you can't stop. And I impress that on them. Then I talked about smoking in movies and showed pictures of Hollywood actors like James Franco and <laughs> oh, uh, Ava Longoria and others who, who smoke and said they're betraying you. They're not really heroes. They care. I, a picture of uh, Robert Pattinson, who played the vampire in the, the, those vampire movies. You know, and I said, bad vampire. <laughs> <laughs> so they were laughing. And the point is, they're not your friend. They're not your role model. They care about themselves and their careers. Right. So do not idolize them. Don't look up to them as heroes. You too are a hero. And when things go wrong, you might be a little at, to, at fault as well. So look at your part. Then I talked about, I showed him pictures of Joe Camel, the cartoon Camel. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And uh, I showed him, I, ta I told them probably most movingly and most powerfully the story of Sean Marcy who was a boy who lived in a small town in Oklahoma, Ada, Oklahoma, where I spoke recently at a school. And Sean died at 19 from chewing tobacco. So I, I'll, I'll give you a little sample of the story. Yeah. One day Sean came home and he waddled it, he waddled it, well, it was cut later in the story. <laughs> one day, Sean heard the phone ring, heard his mama pick up the phone in a room like she always did. And she, he heard her crying in the room, and he went into the room, and he put his hand on her shoulder, and he said, Mama, what's wrong? She looked up, tears coming down. She said, Son, you have cancer in your tongue. Mm. They're going to have to cut out your tongue. Mm. Oh, so my on. goodness. <laughs> and, and he goes, Cut out my tongue. Will I, get, will I be able to talk again? And the doctor said, I don't think you're going to be able to talk like you are now, son. And I wind him through the story over mm -hmm. a 10-minute span, and I've got him to the point uh, where Sean dies at 19. Mm. And I show him pictures of how he looked with part of his jaw removed. And that's powerful stuff for those kids. Then I move as I build toward the final part of my talk. I, I give them 
the initiation into life. And I say, now we're going to revive an ancient practice of initiating our young. And it was done all over the world, and this is what the people did. The elders would take the young ones out in the forest and give them some pain. They'd take their food away and, you know, deprive them of sleep, and they would introduce pain to their lives. And I could never understand why the elders used to do those things thousands of years ago. One day, I tell them, I got it. The elders were saying, until today, you've been a child. We adults have tried to shield your eyes from the evil people in this world. And today we're going to let you know that life is going to bring you some pain. One day a grandparent may die. I'm not going to take you out in the forest, so don't get nervous. But one day, yeah, a grandparent may die, or a parent may die, or yeah, something hard is going to happen. And that's what we adults, hap that's what happens to us. And out there, a lot of adults who haven't been initiated into life, they don't know any better. They don't want to feel their pain. So they go out and they drink in a bar because they don't want to feel their pain. They'll go out and light a cigarette and I tell the children and watch the smoke curling in the air because they don't want the pain of nicotine withdrawal. It hurts. Mm. Ah. Some people take drugs that destroy their lives and their futures because they don't want to feel their pain. The message of the initiation is clear. Face your pain and we'll face it together. Talk to a trusted teacher, the school counselor, your friends, your parents, and together we will face any problem life throws at us. Welcome now a little closer to the world of adults. You are initiated into life. And I close the talk with a piece that tells the children, some of you, I know you're worried about the future. Is there going to be a job out there for me? The economy is tough. Some of you are worried about these new diseases we see or all the weird weather we're having. And it's a scary time. Uh, wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the threat of a terrorist attack at home. And I tell those children, number one, talk about it to a trusted teacher, the school counselor, connecting with others is a way to win in life. Not face your problems alone, not keep a deep dark secret that you never told anybody. Talk to someone, tell that secret. Number two, try and think a little more positive. I can't do it, I can do it, and so on. Number three, reevaluate what real wealth is. Is real wealth about money? Or isn't it about the love we get at home, our friends, our family, connection with God and nature? That's real wealth. And lastly, I tell them, catch my faith. I have this rock solid faith that no matter what happens in this world, we were gonna, we're gonna find a solution to global warming. We're gonna find solutions. We will have world peace. And it might not be easy getting there and the road might be scary, but we're gonna face that road, go down that road together. And on the other side of that road, I believe I have this faith that there are wondrous things coming in this world and you will need your health. So don't smoke and don't drink, don't use drugs. Hold on to your health for those incredible years ahead of us all. And we will have a smoke-free society one day and a drug-free society and a society where parents are there longer for their, parent, their kids. And it's coming because of you, I tell the children. That's what I told them at the two schools where, Frank, where Tifton Regional had me speaking. Mm -hmm. You are the future and it's going to happen because of you. So thank you to Tifton Regional for having me here, and uh, I'm thrilled to be on board with you. Well, I'm sure that it's very impactful for the children to hear that from you, of all people, to speak about tobacco and tobacco awareness. So thank you for everything that you do, and thank you for coming to Tifton. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank and you. this is what they do in Russia. <laughs> they pat their hearts when they're touched. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for watching Tea Time today. We'll see you next time right here on Plant Tiff Nets Wiregrass Channel 3. The fourth annual Tour de Tifton Century Ride is slated for Saturday, April 6th, Tift Area YMCA. Registration opens at 7 a.m. A mass start will begin at 8. Call 387-9622 for more info on the Ilse Boyette Memorial, the fourth annual Tour de Tifton Century Ride 2013. Isn't this
is a great way to spend an afternoon. Come check out Stevie B's at 131 South Virginia Avenue next to Tractor Supply Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Check out their all-new lunch buffet, which includes your drink, Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. No time to sit down for lunch? Go try their new carryout buffet for only $7.49. They've also got pasta, breadsticks, a salad bar, 10 pizzas, four desserts, sweet and unsweet tea, and all the Pepsi products. They can always create your own pizza. The $5.99 lunch buffet starts Monday and runs Monday through Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Like us on Facebook for special deals. Stevie B's, 131 South Virginia Avenue in Tifton. Are you in the mood for some amazing food? Well, stop by the Smokehouse, home of the best ribs in the South on 82 in Tifton, and try their new barbecue buffet. The barbecue buffet features their signature smoked chicken, pulled pork, and their famous barbecue beans, all cooked over high-quality blackjack oak. The barbecue buffet is offered daily from 1130 to 2 and from 530 to 8. On Friday and Saturday nights, try the buffet featuring Lake Okeechobee fresh catfish. The Smokehouse is home of certified Angus beef, and they're now in their 26th year. Let them cater your next party. Give them a call at 386-0606. Ranchero's Fresh Grill is now open in Tifton at 133 South Virginia Avenue across from Tractor Supply. Ranchero's has the finest and freshest tacos, burritos, salads, quesadillas, nachos, and chips and salsa anywhere. Want dessert? Ranchero's has that as well with the s'mores quesadilla for only $2.99. Don't forget about the kids. Ranchero's has kids meals starting at only $3.99. Find them on Facebook for coupons and specials. Call them at 396-5555, 133 South Virginia Avenue in Tifton. 